Hello and welcome everybody. This is your host, Leervok, and you are just in time for more Lego Bionicle Mock Showcase. In this episode, we're going to be looking at yet, yet another Toa, uh, Kopaka Rebuilt. For a brief, brief refresher of my Toa project I've been working on, I will refer you to the Takanuva video, which will be the first episode of the series. This will explain the general base design of all the Toa and what I used as kind of, kind of general construction. Um, as a quick refresher, these are just basically Bionicles rebuilt using a mixture of old and old Bionicle pieces and the new CCBS systems. Basically just to kind of create a simplified uh, kind of what if Lego did a did Bionicle today with all the new with access to all the pieces. Um, so yeah. Uh, though if they did it today, they'd probably do a lot more dip, a lot more, and have a lot of extra pieces, but you know, that's just, you know, them with the budget. Them with the, with the money to do it. Anyway, let's look at Kopaka here. So, uh, right away, we'll look at the chest piece and get that out of the way. This is just a simple uh, piece that came, I believe came off of one of the Bionicle Stars sets, um, which, hey, you know, Good for them having at least one good piece that came out came out of that set. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Bionicle Stars. The fact they just made all the care all the main characters the size of my Torn just kind of felt like an insult. Um, not to mention at that point like all the pieces were breaking. There's like Fantoka, Mystica, and Stars. And I think even that even bled into Hero Factory a little bit, some of the more brittle pieces. Um, up until they got uh, uh, the CCBS system in and actually started making good ball socket joints again. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, um, so we got that. Uh, we'll look at his shield here, which is, I believe, uh, Onepu Mari? Well, the Toa Mari shield. Um, and one of the interesting, unfortunate things about the shield. Um, is that if you look up close here, we'll bring it up close to the camera, you'll see it on this side, and if we flip the shield this side, and if we look at the extra piece I have here, which ignore the dirty, ignore how dirty it is, um, right here, all three of these pieces have a fracture in the exact same spot. Now, Two of these pieces actually came from uh, my own personal collection I've had for oh, since I got those pieces originally. Uh, so I kind of expected, oh, it must have been just me playing with them too hard and it must have broke, it must have been. Then I got this piece uh, in the mail and it's like, it's also crap. Um, so I guess that's just a common thing. I think, I think on Bricklink even there's a lot of pieces that are a lot of the, the conditions they got they talk about the fractures and like play wear on them which leads me to assume that, that that's just a problem with the, with the design of that piece in general yeah kind of a bit bit of a shame um but yeah what are you gonna do uh next we'll look at the arm uh, i'm going for the crystal arm thing again like with tahu um only in this case i'm not just i'm just stopping at the arm and not adding crystal armor, um, he's got regular armor on, and in this case he's got armor with a bit of a kind of a crack feature on it with a sticker here. Um, I thought that they're kind of cool and kind of broke up a bit of the whiteness of his armor a bit, so it kind of helps uh, helps him stick out a bit more without sticking out too much because, you know, he still has to be uh, mostly white so he can hunt in the in the frigid air of uh, uh, Kauai, in the frigid mountains. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll, look, we'll go ahead and look at his other arm now. Standard uh, kind of dark gray arm inners, uh, white armor, 
a bit of gold here for a bit of an armor look for a sword arm. Um, two purposes for that. One, uh, kind of an homage to G2 counterpart. I believe one of the G2 counterparts has a similar design where he has like gold on his arms. Um, in this case, I just had it on one arm instead of on, on both arms. Um, I might actually change these out for silver pieces if I can manage to find them cheap enough. Whew! I have not been any time looking for those are freaking expensive pieces. I can get the white ones for like 50 cents, which is like not too bad of a price. I can get the gold ones for like 50 cents a piece. The silver ones, like a dollar twenty-five at the cheapest. Except for one I one that got in the mail today that I think I got for like 40 cents, but it unfortunately broke um, the little pin, the little pins holding it that you used to hold it, and one of those one of those broke off when I was trying to fix it because the because the person that sold it to me neglected to tell to mention that the pieces had glue all over them. Like in the, in the it's just it's just like in the little pin piece. I don't even mm. so I was trying to like cut the glue off with my with my smallest knife I could find, and it's just. Actually, that's not what broke. What broke was me test was me fitting it in to test in one of my pieces, and it broke coming out. Other pin works fine, but you know that's fine. Actually, I should probably show you what I mean here. So inside these are these little pin connectors that you use to connect to the armor for like customization features. The top pin here broke off, snapped off of the other one, of the silver one I've gotten. Um, I wouldn't be able to use it on a pocket anyway because I only had the one. Um, but I did manage to use it for another for another character, which we'll get to when we get to that. <laughs> uh, that's a burning theme here. So yeah. Um, anyway, the other reason I gave him this armor here and his sword arm is because in real life, that's something some swordsmen will actually do. They'll protect themselves with this kind of arm armor on one arm on one arm, usually on their sword arm, as a form of protection. That way, when you, you know when you swing wide like that, and someone counters with a strike, it won't cut off your arm. Um, so yeah. So now let's move on to the sword, which uh, I kind of nicknamed the Doom Slayer Engine Blade um, because this originally started off as a kind of attempt to create the Doom Slayer sword, the Crucible from. Uh, Doom Eternal. Uh, primarily the part where you, you can like snap the blade off and then like fold the, the guard in. Obviously it didn't really work out and but I kind of liked how it looked so I fiddled with it. Um, it also explains why this one is painted silver instead of you know Kopaka's normal white sword. Uh, this is actually my original Kopaka sword from way way back in 2001. Um, and I, all I gotta got do is just use some mineral spirits and just wipe off the paint and it'll be fine. I just haven't done that yet. You can actually see some of it wearing off right up here. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah. The reason it's called the Doom Slayer Engine Sword comes down to the middle here where the guard, or the, uh, the part of the, the rest of the guard is. Uh, this kind of chunkier, meatier bit, uh, unintended as it was remind me of the engine blade from Final Fantasy 15 so yeah um, especially with the kind of how it has this kind of asymmetric design to it um, actually before we put it put them up let's go ahead and show the storage methods for the sword and the shield um, so the shield you may have noticed has a bit of one of these weird kind of long three length pins with the little axle connector at the back end um, part of that comes Part of that reason is to make it easier to pull everything off, because theoretically you should be able to just uh, grab it right here and just pull it all out. Um, I really, really hate having to pull the pins out separately like that. Um, but another reason is for when you store it, um, you just plug it right into his butt. <coughs> yeah, this is, yeah, get your jokes out there. It's, yeah, it's the best I could do. The best I could make work. Um, you can adjust it a little bit so that he can move his arms a little more freely, his legs a little more freely. Um, and then you can like close it up to kind of 
keep it from kind of compress it all down. Um, for the engine blade, or the, uh, yeah, I guess we could call it the engine blade of doom. Uh, Kopaka's, Kopaka's engine blade of doom. There we go. I like that. I actually kind of like that now that I think about it. Um, you have this little pinhole here, and on the other side, another pinhole. Just pick one and you can just kind of slot it right in on this little half pin piece here. So, yeah. And there we have Kopaka's dormant form, I guess you'd say. Kind of posing for the posing and looking cool. Pun definitely intended. <laughs> um, so yeah, go ahead and get a side view here. You can see the you can see the uh, the crack the ice cracked armor a little better. Um, so yeah, uh, looking more further south towards Kopaka's legs, you'll notice he uses the Anika. I believe these are the Anika legs or the Anika arms, maybe both. Um, this gives him a bit of a taller build compared to other, well, most other Toas, uh, with one exception being, we'll probably get into the next episode. Um, but let me go ahead and bring out uh, Tahu here to kind of show um, a bit of a size comparison, um, which actually you can't really show here. I think I mentioned this, that Tahu is a bit of a, a medium length Toa, medium height Toa. Uh, so his height comparison between like Kopaka and the other, uh, which I don't, I don't know why I'm not, I don't know why I'm not saying this. It's not like we're not going to talk about them eventually. Um, it's kind of minuscule. It kind of look almost the same size here. Um, but if we show him off against uh, Takanuva, who is in the smaller category, you can definitely tell a bit of a height difference here. Um, you can definitely tell there's a bit of a height difference, even with the cape on. Let's move the cape to the side here a little bit to see. Uh, move the armor. Actually, no, I can just move the whole thing off. You can kind of see where his arm begins and where Kopaka's arm begins are in like completely different sections. Like, there's definitely some. It definitely with the armor off, you can tell the height difference now. <laughs> um,. There you go. Snap that in the right spot. So, yeah. Um, so, Kopaka is in the tall category. Uh, this is partly to kind of make him more, a bit more of a lankier, taller Toa. He's supposed to be like, you know, the Toa of Ice. So, having like a taller, thinner appearance gives, makes more makes perfect sense, you know, for a survival. Uh, which also leads down to his feet design using the Rakshi feet for the design. Um, I wanted to go for more a uh, bit of a snow uh, snowshoe look. You know, either between that or the uh, one of the Anika feet. And I went back and forth between the two. Um, let me see if I can actually find some Anika feet in my... Uh, oh, here we go. There we go. So use a uh, Kangu I think it's Kongu's feet, that the green Toa and Nika. Um, so you got this kind of, you definitely have this more snowshoe look. But, I don't know, it just kind of felt too big. Or maybe like too small. I can't, I can't describe why it didn't work for me. I, I look at, I, again, it's between this or the Rakshi feet, and I kind of went with the Rakshi feet because it kind of, it felt better. It, it kind of played into this kind of lankier design. Um, again, kind of gave him this sort of snowshoe look without being completely a snowshoe, even though the Nike would totally fit more. Um, and it also doesn't hurt that, you know, it's what I have, have around. I have about 4,000 of those. It's just the white rock sheet feet for some reason. I don't even know where I got all of them. I think I must have gotten them from some of my friends who gave me their Lego sets. Um, but yeah, so... Yeah, giving him more of a snow uh, survivalist look. Um, real quick, we'll go ahead and take a look at his uh, head and drop the mask or add it. So obviously, you know, his original white mask with x-ray vision. 
Um, then gave him a white Toa head with the or uh, orange was uh, I thought I thought this was kind of going in uh, a bit of a contrast to Tahu's where I gave him the blue eyes and I figured hey you know these guys these guys are kind of like rivals in a way to each other they're both swordsmen they're fire and ice so they're kind of opposites um, so I figured I'd kind of keep with that theme of going with opposite appearances. So I'll give Kopaka red eyes instead of blue eyes to kind of counter Tahu's blue eyes. So yeah. Um, <coughs> and I believe that is everything. So yeah. Um, yeah. With all that, let me put him in a cooler pose before you end. There you go. Trying to get him to cross, trying to get him to do the cold cross arm thing. Not really working. Out. There we go. That might work out better. There, like that, maybe. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop myself here soon, or else I'm gonna be. Oh, that, there we go. Let's try. There we go, let's do that. That that'll that'll work if I can get the there we go. That'll work. Okay. So with all that said, that long-winded posing there, I will see you guys later.